So we started off the, the week Sunday, 10th of September, Sunday afternoon, two o'clock in the afternoon. There's reports that a guy has been shot uh, in, in a park near a supermarket at Bildal. Well, he's been shot in the bum while he's running away, right? Um, so that, that kicked off the week. And then I think on Tuesday there was a shooting at Campsy. Now, this was a little bit more heavyweight, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a bloke called Valina Kaloa Matangi, who you wouldn't say he was super well known, but, you know, when you begin when we begun to delve Dig into around, it, yeah. yeah, there was clearly some links to the underworld and people... And the cops knew him to. very, very well. The cops knew him, and that was for a, a main reason that he'd been shot before. That's right. Three years earlier, he was sitting in a car... Uh, with uh, another well-known crime figure who we, we probably won't name. But anyway, someone came up. This person was a well-known um, enemy of the Hamsies and he shot, shot at the car, hitting this guy in the chest and then three years later, he must be a tough bugger. Because, I mean, <laughs> seriously, they put one in his head yeah. and another one and he's still, he's still surviving. He was in the basement uh, of, of an apartment block, wasn't in the car park, sorry. Yeah. And uh, he's, he survived. So the police are now trying to look at that. And then the Wednesday, the very next night, um, 9 p.m. at uh, Blackett, at Western Sydney, yep. um, not far from Bidwell where there was a shooting Sunday, 29-year-old guy, he is shot as he's getting out of his car or coming back from, from, uh, from work mm. uh, later at night. And he's shot in the head. And, <laughs> all right, and that was pretty serious. So in space of four or five days, you've got five people shot. Uh, that guy's name was Michael Papu, is that how yeah, you say? Yeah. Um, total clean skin. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's interesting, um, you know, by the time there was the third one, third shot, I, you get these uh, radio stations and other people ringing up and going, oh, can you come on, we want to talk about all these shootings. And they, in trying desperately, they all think that they're linked. So you look at these three victims. One shot in the bum on a Sunday afternoon, mm -hmm. Another guy's shot in it with three burnt out cars. That's yeah. a very serious underworld hit. Yes. And another guy is shot in the driveway and there's only really, uh, there's no burnt out cars, none of the hallmarks and the total clean skin. No. So how do you link? They're three very, very different methods, yeah, totally. victims. But well, as we sit here now, you know, uh, and it's easy with the the benefit of hindsight but I think one of the things that we've learnt in the last uh, couple of years as Sydney has been going through this underworld war and has as there has been so many shootings is that um, I guess when certain oh, is this a fair comment that when certain people call us to tell us there's been a shooting yeah. we take it a bit more seriously yes. than if other people come and tell us because and the reason for that is that those certain people who would call us would be connected. No, what's would know the individuals involved, and if they know them, they're going to be well known. Right. And so, you know, the the one at Bidwell on a on a Sunday afternoon, we always, you know, the first thing he was just hear, out of jail. Remember that he was, was he so. was a few uh, what, a week and a bit earlier. Yeah. We're kind of conditioned, I think, at this point to hear Sydney shooting and go, oh wow, who yeah. is it? And um, I think a lot of other people, you know, in the media and and on social media are are in the same uh, the same frame of mind now. They go, oh, wow, is this another underworld hit? So when we hear about a shooting at Bidwell, we go, right, who's this? Turns out to be, what, potentially a, 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 a civil drug kind of dispute. It could be that. Something in, very minor. Uh, We're yeah. just, you know, absolutely hypothesizing. Um, Tuesday then, night's one, though. Is Tuesday night's weight. one is serious. Yeah. You get gunmen who are lying in wait in the underground car park of an apartment block, something we've heard about before. Sure. with Stolen... Yes. Three stolen vehicles end up in flames across the, the yep. vicinity. It's planned. Planned. And it's not cheap. That it's one. not cheap. It's Someone's not. gone to a lot of intent. And then when you hear who the, the target is and then, you know, learn about his links to other shootings, shootings. as we said before, yeah. Yeah. it becomes a bit and clearer. And crime families and disputes. And then you get to the one at Blackett. Now, Blackett, um, I remember the, when I heard about this one, and I wasn't actually quite sure exactly where Blackett was, but it's just yeah. it's essentially a suburb of Mount Druid. It is. It, yeah. um, and once upon a time, shootings out there weren't anything, you know, too unusual. It's no. Probably a, f a fair comment. Um, but there were more drive-bys and stuff. This was one with intent. As, yeah. As, that's what Howard that's, Copper that's said true. to me. There was a lot of intent, and they're now looking at, is there something personal involved? Mm -hmm. Um, and again, no record whatsoever. The other two, yeah. well known to cops, really well known. You know, one's just out of the clink, the other's yeah. been in and out. So I think that third bloke, the last thing that had happened to him was almost a decade ago, and it was a, a 
Oh, it was, a, it was a, um, a not paying fine for not paying buying a train ticket. Train ticket, yeah, that's not you know, exactly. So that's, it's it's not a very minor criminal record. It is. I think mine's worse. It is much yeah. worse. <laughs> that's yeah. right. And that's going to be another episode. Right, my criminal record. Yeah. yeah no, it's, most of it's so long ago that you won't be able to get any record. Of it, so. <laughs> um, but it does show that. So that was, you know, a fairly eventful week in, for us in a way. But then to top it off, the, the cops did get the last word. They did. Because there were raids on the Thursday morning, weren't they? And you yeah, were, you was, saw, you were involved in that, and they were... I wasn't, I was out there, I wasn't Yeah, involved. you weren't involved, sorry. No. Um, <laughs> but, but, um, but these they, are new laws that are, I know are sending tremors through, mm. through the hierarchy of the underworld, because let's face it, everything's driven by money, wealth, and this is what they're targeting, isn't it? Yeah, and so to get to last Thursday, we need to go back about two and a bit years to when police began to feel I think it's probably a fair comment. So they began to feel like they were on the back foot in the underworld war. Um, it was right around the time, you know, there was a, a spate of shootings in that middle of, of 2021 off the back of Medjid Hamzi's Hamzy. death and then Salim Hamzi and Tufik Hamzi. They were very high profile, getting Shady a lot of publicity. Hamzy. It was yes. tit yeah. for tat and you, you began to see shootings involving crime families that were very wealthy. And what police were, well, they weren't struggling to work it out. Um, because they, they said it all centred around drugs. But, you know, these families had wealth beyond what they were saying yeah. they had when they put their tax return in. <laughs> and so police... I think some of them would, uh, would be listing unemployed. Or no, a lot of them have very... They have businesses, don't they? Yeah. Very to cover. Yeah, well, I know that my, one of my favourite stories is that Rashad Alamadeen telling, you know, a few police officers who were trying to give him a, a COVID fine that he made more in a week than they made in a year... Yeah. Um, you know, a bit the of average, arrogance there. The about, average yeah. police salary is 80 grand, so he says he's making you know 80 grand a week. But then also, on his court papers, Rashad Alamadine, when he had to tick the box, said he was unemployed. Point, yeah. Um, so anyway, police were looking at these guys with driving these cars, living this life, and going, "This, you know, we need something more here. We need more powers to be able to get to them." And so they campaigned the government to yeah. bring in what we now call unexplained wealth, wealth. laws, which is, as, as the law says itself, you know. If your your wealth and your lifestyle and your home and your car and everything is worth X amount of money and you're saying you earn millions and millions see, less than that. See, up until now, when they used to seize that, that, they used to get challenged all the time. Mm -hmm. And it was up to the Crime Commission or the cops to prove that, to prove that they had bought those goods or that mm -hmm. house or that car with, with proceeds. proceeds of crime. Yes. Now... And you also have to have them... You know, committing a crime. Crime, that's in, right. In that. Now it's just spun right around, hasn't Yeah, so it? the onus of proof has been completely reversed and it's on the individual. And, and we saw the first major rolling out of these unexplained wealth laws last Thursday when they seized four homes, a $1.3 million Lamborghini, a $380,000 McLaren, 80000 in just pure gold bullion. I don't know how much in designer handbags, watches, jewellery, you know, everything that you would associate the, with... Yeah. With the, all those the symbols lifestyle. that we've seen, yeah. And the cops, I mean, this bloke woke up, you know, I think that's close to $10 million, yeah. nine or $10 million. He woke up with that in his possession on Thursday morning, and by Thursday afternoon, it belonged to the Crime Commission, not him. And so he will now have a seriously tough battle to try and get that. He's going to have to explain it now, isn't he? So, that, so this is the thing. So, the Crime Commission takes it, and the New South Wales Police. They work very closely. Do they together. drive the cars around in the meantime? No, <laughs> oh, probably. I don't know. <laughs> they don't go in. Nah, they probably not say, allowed to. I would say not. No, yeah, okay. Thanks, Moss. Yeah. But what will now happen is that it will be taken to the New South Wales Supreme Court, and that individual and any other individuals charged under the unexplained wealth laws will have to prove to the court that How? they bought those houses, cars, whatever the possession may be, legitimately. You know, so if. If he turns around and says, "Oh, I actually won the lottery," and and here's yeah. my receipt to prove the ta you know yeah. that I bought a Tats lottery ticket, they'll say, "Too good, here you go, have it yeah. all back." Um, They're going to have to be very, very good at washing their money if they to get away with mm -hmm. it. And yeah. that's so, so now now it creates a massive legal battle. Yeah. Um, but it's and it's, they've gone for like a big guy, like their first target. They haven't. <laughs> we haven't gone and tested the waters by grabbing a guy with a Mazda RX-3, have they? Or something. No, like they've no, gone exactly. straight up. So that'll be interesting to see how, how it pans out in the court because I'm sure a guy will be fighting to try and get all this back. Yeah, it's a bit of a watershed you know, day. And as you said before, it's 
immediately sent shockwaves yeah, through the They were the always worried about it. You, you know, know, I think you can hear about these laws and them coming in and it's all, oh, okay, yeah, sure. It's a bit hypothetical, but no, now it's it's so legitimate. It's, it's happening and, and, and blokes are feeling the pinch of it. Yeah. So it's, they're going for the money because mm-hmm. they know that's the whole thing that drive, drives everything. Mm-hmm. So um, like we saw Operation Sugarcane, right, which was when we had the big war, the Almadine hamsey War, what was being funded was drugs, all right? And so instead of, we know everyone's going, oh, they haven't arrested any of the, anyone for the murders properly. Yeah, the top So what they the tried to, crimes. they tried to take out the earners, which was the middle. Yeah, well, I think we, we say, I think um, Commissioner Karen Webb said, oh, we cut the head off the yeah, snake. Yeah, no, they didn't. They took the stomach out. <laughs> they took the underbelly out. Yeah, yeah, yeah you it, know. Um, but it was effective. It was. It was very effective. I think we've seen a real slowdown in in the crimes around the, those two groups mm-hmm. since then. Mm-hmm. So, but now we've also seen the emergence of a whole lot of other shootings. We mm-hmm. talked about three last week unrelated. Before that, there were, there were some shootings and they're being put down to a new, new crew called the Outcasts. Yes. And this is a group that police have kind of uncovered while they're investigating all these shootings. And they're referring to them as the workforce for the Alamedines and the Common Chiros, mm. who are going around uh, doing extortions and you know and shootings mm. for those groups, so um, it's just going to flare up again potentially. And I think that hit on Tuesday, mm-hmm. um, there will be revenge for that. I think that's not one that person has some very well-known links and connections who. Once, you know, it starts off over drugs and that, and then sometimes ego takes over and that's where we see these feuds escalate. And that, let's hope that doesn't happen for the cops on that one, but I reckon it will. So these, this crew called the Outcasts, which have, have kind of been uncovered during oper- you know, Task Force Magnus, looking at some shootings uh, recently, you know, including shootings at the barbershop at Marrickville, uh, even the big hit on Meridian, Meridian, sorry, you know, a well-known common chero. Now, the outcasts, until recently, were considered mainly a prison gang that were started at Goulburn Maximum Security, uh, beginning with a, a lot of young Islander guys, really tough guys from Doonside, Western Suburbs, who are in jail, form their own group. But they're now establishing themselves outside. Of, yeah. And they are, are becoming very well known and a go-to group, from what I can gather, that the cops have decided they've got a target because they think they are... They're like the the new the, the new crew that were kind of like the KVT. Remember, they they were the muscle doing all the dirty work for the Alamedines, and you know cops had targeted them. Now this new crew are emerging, the outcasts. And you even they were involved in a shooting. Yeah, it just popped up when I was looking through um, some court documents the other day that um, a bloke called uh, Thomas Vandermeer, who's better known as as a rapper, um, Marcy Rook who is currently serving jail time for the shooting of uh, John Lavulu, who's another rapper, better known as Big Cash. Right, even uh, I've heard of him. Yeah. <laughs> and um, because he was shot. Yeah. <laughs> and in the, um, in the court documents, it, it spoke about, you know, before you get sentenced, you go through what they call a sentencing assessment report yep. with a psychologist, and he, and he spoke about his, um, and it kind of, it was only because of these recent shootings that it stood out, but um, he spoke about his links to what he called a group. He said they weren't a gang called Outcast. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, he hasn't been involved in anything recent because he's been in jail, jail since, you know, the last couple of years. But it was just, yeah, was, that, that was obviously, you know, a lot of these... And I don't think A it's, lot of the time we hear about, you know, rumoured groups, this kind of thing. So there obviously is something legitimate to it. Oh, it is. I mean, it's been... It, it, it's in um, pr- prison uh, intel reports that these guys are there. And now... And the, the cops have actually come out and said, yep, yeah, we've, we've established that they... Uh, on the streets now and operating outside of prison until then. And their patch mm. is very similar to the common chiro, isn't it? Yeah. They actually yeah, have an yellow emblem. and gold. Gold, similar black. colour. Yeah. So um, let's, what's, you know, they're out there and from what, they're tough and they're not afraid to do anything for money. So that's the new problem for the cops. They just, it just keeps up. Yeah, well, we've always said it isn't every time, you know. Well, it keeps us. Some, somebody gets yeah. taken out, you know, there's always somebody They'll to step up. They'll see me through to retirement, place. probably see you through to retirement. They're, they're going to keep killing. They just can't help it. It's too much money. 